Hi, my name is Benjamin, author of Master Math Models. Okay, I'm here to answer a few questions with regards to uh, this year's PSLE 2021. Lots of kids came out saying that's so difficult, right? So the simple question is this. Is the PSLE 2021 harder than all the other PSLE papers before this? And will next year's paper be harder, easier, or just the same? Okay, now this year's paper was made up of a few uh, unique questions that uh, like the Helen and Ivan's coins where lots of uh, viral videos have been made about it as well as the difference by elimination area and perimeter rate of volume flow questions of which I've made uh, videos of all of those so take a look at them but anyway that simple answer to uh, is this year's PSLE max the most difficult the answer is no it is simply no okay every year uh, the max papers in the last few years have been uh, have had difficult questions and the need of preparation that students must have these days is to prepare to be able to think flexibility flexibly so is next year's paper going to be easier or harder or just the same the answer i believe is more or less the same so if you think this year's paper was hard next year's paper will be hard okay so over the years has it gotten harder the answer to this is that more or less yes okay and the reason for this is because the um, the ministry has already announced that they are going to focus more on questions that require thinking flexibly and flexibly flexibly and out of the box and uh, hence analytical thinking so how about all the tuition classes and school classes where they teach all the heuristic skills how has that helped or not helped okay the simple answer to this is focusing on heuristic skills is not the way to go. Okay, because as you can see, many of these students who went to memorize and the parents get them to memorize, send them to tuition to memorize these heuristic skills, what happened? In the end, they went to the exam and they could not do the question and they became very depressed. Why? Because they had expected the questions to come out a certain way and they did. The answer is, in some of these questions, the answer is no. So, what kind of training is really needed? The kind of training that is really needed is the training to be able to understand the question, understand mathematics, and then to be able to adapt and use this flexibly. So, the general idea is that students should be able to learn a method that allows them to look at questions from different angles. Okay, but before I go into what to do, let's talk about what not to do. Okay, what you do not want to do is to go and memorize heuristic skills. Okay, learning maths through memorization is a bad idea. It will not get you very far. And every time you come to a new question, you will have to relearn. All right, so this is something that should be avoided uh, as far as possible. The students these days have been overtrained to deal with heuristic skills. And why doesn't this work? Other than the fact that there's no flexibility. The answer is that there are 11 major heuristic skills. And to be able to use these heuristic skills well, first of all, you must learn how to recognize the questions that belong to all 11 types. This is not easy, just the recognition. And then you need to understand how each of these systems work, every step of the process, and 11 systems. This is not easy. Can you see the problem now? Okay, even parents who have been doing this for years, teaching their students this for, uh, teaching their children this for years, they have difficulty doing this. How about children who are not yet mature in their thinking? So obviously it is not the way to go. On top of this, it doesn't allow them to really appreciate the maths that they learn. So in my 20 years of experience, what have I learned? I have learned that to get children to memorize these 11 heuristic skills, to master them, is something that is too challenging for the majority of students. They are not able to do this well, and it actually becomes an obstacle to their learning. So what is the solution? Okay, the solution is stop endless memorizing go back to the basics go back to understanding maths so the idea here is to teach and to learn from understanding 
and to use one or two universal skills that can apply to a wide range of questions. I've had the benefit of teaching hundreds of students who have stayed with me from lower primary all the way to upper secondary. And what I have seen is that through this unique view is that having understood how formulas are derived and how the methods work, they are able to develop flexibility and hence able to answer questions themselves. The best part is many of these students through this method become interested in maths. They actually become interested in maths, they no longer hate maths and you will start to see them excel. So what would be the objective of a method that is good? Okay, it is one that produces consistent top results without sacrificing the mental health of the student to endless hours of drills and practice. It should also be a system that develops an interest in mathematics for the student rather than having to force them to memorize stuff. The purpose of this is to build a strong foundation in maths that is the cornerstone of many subjects that they will learn later and as well as in many industries. And the second purpose is to be able to have a healthy balance between academic achievement as well as having time for the children to enjoy their childhood and their growing journey. So what does such a method look like? It should be able to build up a strong foundation in mathematics as early as possible in their childhood through the use of a simple method to understand math and apply it to increasingly complex questions. It must be easy to understand and also apply to a wide range of questions. If you want to know what such a system looks like, well, then just watch the videos I have posted on how to solve six of the most challenging questions by using such a simple system of understanding and approach. Many of my students tell me every year actually that they say, well, last year's paper was difficult, this year's paper will be easy, or this last year's paper was easy, so this year's paper will be difficult. Uh, this is a myth. It is not true. Okay? Do not buy into this. If you buy into this, you're going to have big problems. All right? Every year, the papers are set based on certain criteria, certain level of difficulty that we are expected in order to differentiate students going to the various streams and going to the various schools. Okay, it is a streaming exam. So what do you expect? Surely, there will be easy as well as difficult questions spread out evenly throughout the papers. Next year's paper will be just as easy or as hard as the one this year, depending on how you found the paper this year. Okay? What is the best preparation for PSLE Math 2022? Well, it is to learn a simple method that allows you to understand math without too much memorizing and that you can apply flexibly to various questions. And that takes a bit of practice, of course, but with practice, you will be able to handle even questions that you are not familiar with. If you found this video useful, please subscribe to my channel and also join me in my Telegram group where I'll be adding in new videos for you or your child's learning. Good luck out there.